Well, well, thank you, Stacy. My name well, is Tom Payne. Good, they are, but we're leaving in a half. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you that my first contact with Henry Edward was not good. Uh -oh. Uh oh. I was born in January the second of 1942 mm -hmm. in Oak at the Oak Airport uh, Hospital, not the airport. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, back in those days, the new ba the New Year baby got a layette from the merchants. That means diapers, that means powder, that means all kinds of clothing and blankets and stuff. And I was in the running. I was born on the second day of January. And I was beaten out by a young lady born in Oak Margaret Hospital from Henrietta. Her name was Bursley. <laughs> and I don't remember her first name because we haven't talked a lot. I did run into her at Stillwater when I was a student over there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was my first experience with Henrietta. It was uh, got beaten out for the uh, Layette from the... I am a Rotarian, and I was born and raised in Oak Margaret, as I said. Graduated in 1960, and I married a gal from Morris named Wanda Sue Brigantz. And we've been married 58 years. We've got three kiddos. The oldest is 57. And uh, the youngest is 50. The oldest boy retired from the Air Force. The daughter lives in Tulsa and has a, is a, uh, writes music and makes CDs uh, at, for her church and, and religious and leads praise and worship at her church. And she has a daughter. And then our youngest son flies for Southwest Airlines as well as being a, uh, a helicopter pilot for the U.S. Air Force Reserve Search and Rescue. And he's had seven deployments, three to Afghanistan, two to Iraq, and uh, two to Djibouti. So, and I was a helicopter pilot after I graduated from OSU and uh, forestry, and uh, I went to Vietnam two different times as a helicopter pilot. Was not wounded, took many hits, shot down and all those things, but praise God, I was never injured. And nobody on my helicopter, well, there was a couple that did get minor injuries, but I just thank God for that because I came home after two tours in 66, 67, and again in 70, 71. And the gentleman there, uh, he and I talked about his experience in Vietnam too. But at any rate, we live in Tulsa. I've been a Rotarian since 1979. When I lived in McAllister, down there for 20 years, I was a Rotarian with that club and joined it in 70, <coughs> 79, and I became the president about five years later. And then we retired, basically, out of our businesses down there and moved to Tulsa. As I tell people, we escaped from McAllister, <laughs> and uh, so we've lived up there in Tulsa 25 years. I was in the member of the downtown Rotary Club there in Tulsa, which is a huge thing, it was like 400 members when I first joined it, and was a member there 25 years, and a year and a half ago I got tired of driving all the way downtown <coughs> to the Rotary meetings on Wednesday at noon, mm -hmm. and I joined the Big Speed. Rodeo, rodeo club, rodeo club. <laughs> but they're a real good group, about 60, and they're very, very active. And I'm the sergeant arms there, so <laughs> find people and things like that. Another thing we little do is uh, we have a happy pup. <clears throat> For a dollar, you can stand up and tell whatever you're happy about, or if you're sad, you can do the same. But usually, it costs two dollars to say we. we uh, we do that and we raise some funds that way, but I've been a Rotarian for a long time and have had a lot of experience around the world and my wife and I cruising and I always try to go to the Rotary meetings in other countries and it's always so exciting to have them say, well, how big is your club? And when I was in the downtown club, I'd say, well, it's about 400. 400? What do you all do? Anyway, I... Uh, Last year, I became aware of a need. Now, you and Henrietta have met that need in this respect, the doughboy, and the, the efforts that were done in your town for those that were killed in World War I, II, 
in Korea and Vietnam. It was updated recently by Mr. Goodner, who is, uh, I think, the uh, BFW uh, now, <coughs> and post commander. And it's a wonderful tribute to those from uh, Henrietta and the southern part of the county, but there is nothing in the county seat of Omagi for all those killed in our county of Omagi. Now, the ones you have here are definitely would be included. But I embarked on this effort. I traveled all over eastern Oklahoma last year and looked and took pictures of memorials in all of the different towns and county seats. And everybody just about had one. Most of them were done in the 80s and 90s. But Oklahoma doesn't have one at all. <clears throat> so I thought, well, I'm 78 years old. I want to try to do that for Oklahoma County. And that's what I have embarked on as a project uh, to do. Uh, I have some brochures. We have, you may have wrote into these. I don't know. I've tried to put a few out. I bought a thousand and I've put out almost 600 of them. Um, this is a project that uh, you have one. Yeah. yeah okay. I don't know if you do. We have a steering committee of uh, eight or nine people, and uh, they're listed on there. Uh, we have been meeting now for about six months. They're the second Tuesday of every month at the Oatmoggy Library. There is a gentleman from Morris, a lady from Beggs, uh, a man from Grayson named Leon Anderson. I don't know if you met him. And really a fine fellow. And, uh, but I was unable, I tried three or four folks from Henrietta to get on this committee, talked to Mr. Goodner, he said, no, I'm really too busy. Uh, one of your citizens is a gentleman that was still on active duty with the National Army Reserves, and I'm not sure what his name is now, I can't remember. So, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, Henrietta has always given uh, recognition to those that died in wars. <clears throat> what we've come up with is a memorial made of black granite. And that's a picture of it. It was designed by the Willis Granite Company out of Granite, Oklahoma. Uh, there's a four-generation family called Willis that had been in that business for years and years and years. Initially, I thought I wanted to pattern it after another one in Wagoner, which I really loved. It was out of pink granite. Well, that quarry is almost empty, and it's from Granite, Oklahoma. It, you may have seen it in the past. It, it's a beautiful pink granite. But we decided to go with another type of granite, which was less expensive, and one that was easily laserable. Because there's 250 names will be on this thing. I researched those through the archives, the State Historical Society, as well as other areas that I've run across online to come up with 75 names approximately from World War I for the whole county, 125 for World War II for the whole county, uh, Korea 15, Vietnam 19, including a young man, Potter, no, what's his name? Uh, he was uh, from up at Clearview, a young black fellow that went to school in Henrietta. Grundy. Grundy. Anthony Grundy. Yeah. Grundy. Yeah. Grundy. Grundy. He's one of them that I ran on to, uh, as well as three from Afghanistan period or the war on terror. And one of them is from Wilson, uh, a young fellow that uh, was a helicopter pilot in the mountain division in uh, New York and was killed in Afghanistan. So, 100, 250 people deserve to be remembered for posterity. And that's what this project's all about. Uh, the amount of money that's needed for this project, had I gone with the granite from Granite, Oklahoma, it would have been seventy five or $80,000. My God, that's a lot of money. But for this one, is 50. 
I mean, the actual granite is only about 35, but you need additional for lights, flagpoles, benches, slab, and all of those things. And so uh, 50,000 is our goal for this thing. And I'm hopeful that before I die, I can see this happen and know that I have tried to do something that's an honorable thing to do. And I think you'll agree it is. I'm not saying it's, uh, once again, Henrietta has never forgotten the veterans of Henrietta in this southern part of the county. I'm sure of destiny <coughs> and things like that. So uh, <clears throat> thus far, we've got $15,000 just short of it. And uh, last week I got $2,000 donations, one from the uh, BFW Post in Okmulgee. I also got a $1,000 donation from the uh, Baptist Church at New <laughs> Can you imagine? You know where New York is? It's way out yonder, isn't it? Uh, and then today I stopped and got a commitment from Neil's Furniture in Opagi, there on the north side, right there at the Indian uh, mm -hmm. gas station. So, things are beginning to pick up. We've had a $5,000 anonymous donor early on, and so it is becoming more and more known as we begin to put out these uh, brochures. I've uh, gone through uh, all of the restaurants, gas stations, from the Tulsa County line clear down here and left, you know, two or three, I don't want to leave them, waste them and put them out there all that, but two or three at each one of those cafes, restaurants, gas stations, and so forth. So that's the project. Uh, <coughs> any questions I have? Where will it be placed? Yes, sir? Where will it be placed? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. Obviously, it's a county memorial. The county commissioners voted unanimously in one of their meetings last October, I believe it was, to place it on the county courthouse lawn in Oakmonkey. And probably be on the northwest corner, which is Oakmonkey Street and 7th Street. It's the biggest open area, no trees to speak of. And uh, the county commissioners unanimously, including yours from the southern half of the county, as well as the northern half, as well as the gentleman in the central half. And that's where it will be placed. Are you a 501c? Sir? Are you a 501c? Yes, good point. point, good point. Right off the bat, I thought, man, I need to start a 501c3. And my CPA said, no, don't do that. He said, it will drive you nuts with reports and so forth. So I thought, well, he said, find another 501c3 that will take this as a project. So I went online to the government on their websites and found there was 120 501c3s listed for Okmulgee County. But in 2010, they were, all of them but a half a dozen were shut down because of lack of reporting. So there was only, like I say, five or six. So one of them had been in existence for 40 years. It was the Deep Fork Community Action Foundation, Inc. They are about a three or four county area they do work for the underprivileged, uh, military, other things. So I approached Christy Baldrige, who's the executive director, and I said, told her what I needed. She said, we'll go with that. And so their board met, they voted unanimous to bring this project under their umbrella and sponsor it. And so their idea is 501c3. So yeah. that, that, that was an important yeah, aspect, I thought, yeah, as we go to various things, uh, <clears throat> organizations, people, and so forth, to uh, see that that's the case. Any other questions? Are you aware of the Vietnam Park Memorial Park? Yes, I am. <clears throat> yes, sir, I've been over there. Uh, that's another example yeah. of what Henrietta has done. And uh, I, you know, I don't, uh, don't have a problem. I just think that's great. Uh, but as a county, I just love to see our county remember the 250 people that have died uh, from all over this county. Uh, it was a, it's a, 
it's quite a difficult thing to find those from World War I. There are not any real records like World War II. Now, World War II records are in United States Army and Navy Marine Corps. And so they're no problem. They kept good records from the counties from which they were originally from. Now, the World War I is really difficult because <coughs> The National Archives has the record, but they're, they're so hard to find it. And so I thought, man, oh man, I, I couldn't seem to find any listing for <coughs> World War I. Which, you know, 30% of the men who died in World War I died from what we're worried with right now. Influenza? The coronavirus. There was a worldwide epidemic in, what, 2016, 17? Mm -hmm. Millions of people died of it. And some of the men died of that, as well as pneumonia from exposure, because in World War I, they weren't properly dressed for the cold, apparently. So there was a number of people killed that, that way and died from those exposures. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, I, I thought, man, how am I going to find out World War I? <clears throat> I went to the State Historical Society, and they do have a list, but I didn't know how accurate it might have been. And then I thought, well, there's a World War I museum in Kansas City. Have you ever been there? It is a fantastic museum. And so I called them up and talked to them. And they said, well, we don't keep those kind of records. We don't have, we just got memorabilia and things like that. And they said, uh, hmm, we know a fellow that has written 26 books on World War I. And he's a handicapped fellow down in Houston, and he goes to New York, I mean, to Washington, to the archives quite often. Well, I contacted him, and he was very courteous, and he said, sure, I'll be glad over the next few months to find that for you. And he did. He gave me a great list, and some were on that one at Oklahoma City Historical Site, some weren't. So I know that numbers are going to be not totally I'm going to say permanent. There may be some changes, <coughs> adding and so forth, as we get into the period where we have to actually laser those on the black granite that is coming from India. That's the least expensive that uh, is apparently available, and it's black, very dark, and it's uh, a good example of some of it that's used was at the Creek Indian. Headquarters in Okmulgee, they have a wonderful veterans um, uh, museum there and memorabilia and so forth. But it's for the tribe, of course. And they use a lot of that black granite from the same area that we're talking about. So, any other questions? Have you identified any, uh, any kind of in kind contributions that people could do opposed to contributing money, like services? Okay, like in kind contributions. There is one thing that, well, this is a product which carries with it, when you sell it, the sales tax. Well, I am in the city of Oatmoggy, as well as the county commissioners, are willing to pass a resolution <coughs> to forego sales tax collection on this. Then you take that to the uh, state uh, tax commission and uh, when you get a, some kind of a form, and that re removes you from the sales tax requirement. So that could be quite a bit. As far as others, nobody really got a lot of uh, things of kind. They want to, you know, that for this kind of thing. Can you think of exactly what you were talking well, about? Well, like you mentioned there would be lighting, so. Yeah. Lighting, yeah. Yeah, you have to buy a special lighting, you know, for outdoor 24 hours and it's going to be weatherproof and all of that and be installed down at the ground level. Now, the county commissioners have agreed to put the slab in. So, that's in kind. Okay. Uh, let's see, there was one other thing I was going to mention. I'm getting old, I can't remember. <laughs> Any other questions about this project? This gentleman has given me one of the very first promotions of this on his uh, newspaper online and the video to be at the Pecan Festival telling you basically what I've already said. 
And but that's been last June, right? Summertime. Warm Summer weather. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I have a level of donors, as you see on the brochure. Uh, one guy said, well, what do you got that General of the Army Corps, we got Navy guys. I said, well, if you'll remember in wartime, the General of the Army is not only over the Army people, he's over the others too. It's usually for a, a theater, things like that. So. <laughs> you can't please everybody yeah. all the time, it seems. <laughs> uh, there's several uh, people have given me uh, testimony that uh, I, I sent out a letter to Mr. Goodman here in town, as well as, woo, woo, you get fined. Yeah. Most of the other will find me for that. But, uh, yeah, uh, the state uh, senator and the state rep and uh, county commissioners all gave me a testimony. And uh, I sent them a form. I said, you print out and write exactly what you want to say and sign it. That way I didn't have any arguments with them when they said, well, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I, they were very good and supportive of this. So, uh, My number and name is on there if you need questions or organizations. Oh, I am applying to a couple of grants. One of them is the Beerson Family Foundation. Now, I don't know if you have any here in, Tulsa, in uh, Henrietta or not. Uh, people that have foundations and grant uh, capabilities. But you ever heard of the Beerson Family Foundation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a $26 million family foundation, and I've made application to them, as well as REC out at their headquarters in Omagi there. They do it four times a year. They make grants to whatever their board says that they do. You know how they came up with their money? The REC? Do you know? They round up. Round up. Exactly right. What? 40, 50 years ago, and somebody paid a bill for $39.28. The 28 cents was rounded, taken, and put in their foundation. Now they've got a very a viable foundation. It's quite an interesting wow. <laughs> activity to do it that way. Of course, it took years to do it, but it's interesting. Did, uh, Stacy, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> anything y'all got questions or say do this or see.